That's kind of profound, to undo the belief in reciprocity. I mean, when you go to a restaurant uh, and you're, you're ordering, you're enjoying your meal and so forth, you may have exchanges and dialogues with the waitress or maitre d' or whatever, but you don't really have a, like a platonic or, or a Socratic dialogue afterwards about, now should I pay my bill or not here? Uh, what do you think? Um, what's your name, Fran? Waitress? Should I? pay the bill. Now, you know, um, is this something that I should do? You know, truly, is it in line with my purpose and so forth? You know, you don't have those kind of dialogues, you know, because there's a lot of assumptions between even the little scenario of going to a restaurant. You go in, you get to your seat, you know, you, you pay, you're going to pay the bill. It's, you may have a, a thought about how much should I leave as a tip, should I tip, you know, all those kind of things may go through your mind. But there's, reciprocity is kind of an assumed thing. They will give you the food and serve you the food, sometimes unless it's a fast food restaurant and you pick it up at the counter, serve yourself with drinks and so forth, or they will give you the food, they will give you the service, and you will pay them in exchange for that food and service. It can be the same with going to buy a blouse or a sweater or buying an automobile. You don't kind of go haggle with them. Should I? You, you think I should pay for this? Do you, you know, it's usually about trying to knock off a couple hundred or a couple thousand off the thing, but the assumption underneath is there's going to be an exchange here. You know, I'll give you the money, I'll sign, I'll pay it off in credit or the future, I'll give you the money and you'll give me the car. And this is very much uh, an assumption. I remember, um, I wasn't here at the monastery, but uh, someone came by one time and uh, wanting you have a, some, a jug of water or some tanks of water filled up and everything like that, almost like, here, yeah, I'm here for a, a, a fill. And then, actually, it, it wasn't just a one-time thing, coming back for a refill and a refill. And it was almost like, well, you're here, and you're in the canyon, and there's no one around for miles, and you've got water, so I need my water, and you will fill my water, and so forth. You know, there, there can be even assumptions of reciprocity with, with many, many things. And I think it's kind of profound to say that it is necessary to have reference points or prompts that are trusted to undo the belief in reciprocity and come to an experience of true giving. Come to an experience of true abundance in your heart, which just means you're happy and joyful and peaceful. And that, that goes beyond this idea of exchange of things. You know, you know, like the that song by the Hollies. You know, all I need is the air that I breathe and to love you. We're going for a little higher than that, even beyond the the air that I breathe. Even all I need, as the Beatles said, is is love. All I need is to give and extend love, and everything will be taken care of, including perhaps an ascension when you drop the world and the body aside and go. It's true. I didn't even need the air. <laughs> you know, like in the Matrix, you know, do you really believe that's air that you're breathing? Morpheus mm -hmm. tells Neo in that one scene. A part of this context that I've, um, I really, really love because it keeps my mind constantly in prayer is not taking anything for granted. And that comes with like not having expectations that any of it is mine. It's like this is all the spirits and this context is that I'm here to give and I'm here to be in service and then I'm given what is helpful for me to be in service by the Spirit continually, but it's it's constantly undoing that part of the mind that then takes it for granted and says, oh, well, I, I need this then, or that will always be there for me. And yeah, it feels like part of that, yeah, undoing the reciprocity. I remember when I first came because I wanted to just be really mindful of my motivations for coming. And I used to ask all the time, like, you know, even cleaning or whatever I was, you know, whatever was guided for me to do. And then I would really get clear in my mind and say, what am I doing this for, really? Was I expecting something in return? Was I, what, what am I doing this for? And, you know, I could see the, the times when, like, it's just so healing, too, to see how that is really ingrained you know, the people pleasing and like really using it to heal that for me, to know that what am I doing this for really? What's my motivation under doing this? 
and then really getting clear and seeing that if I had any expectation or anything like that, it was okay. Like I need to look at my belief in, you know, seeing that, you know, trying to get something instead of to give something. Like I'm here to serve and to be in that experience of the spirit flowing through me. And yeah, and seeing where the blocks would come up so that it would block me from actually being like a channel for the spirit. You know, it's like, ha, huh. you know, watching my own stuff come up and saying, there, that is that, you know, there, that is that wanting you to love me, wanting, wanting maybe to uh, feel like I earned something because I did, you know, just really being honest with myself and using that as my key. What is this for really, you know, and my motivation for cleaning a toilet or, you know, what is that? And really... Uh, for me to really get into the experience of true giving, you know, and to really trust that there was a washing away that needed to happen for me to really truly feel the Spirit doing it through me, for me to step back, you know, and watch the blocks come to the surface. It's a strange notion to this world. All that I give is given to myself. It seems like in this world, if you give, you, you don't have it. You've given it away. It's gone. It's used up. Goodbye. Kiss it goodbye. You'll never see it again. It's out. It's somewhere else. You had it, now they've got it. They. <laughs> and if you keep doing giving in that way, then they'll have more. You know, and, and I'll have less. You know, you see how the ego, it's very strange. All that I give is given to myself. It's a very strange notion to the ego. But to us, it's like, it's the core, it's the heart, it's the, it's the pumping heart, like in the body, that's the, the part of the body that pumps the blood to the rest of the body, like all that I give is given to myself, is spiritually, it's a divine principle that's true. It's our relationship with God, is what it is, it's like having that experience of being in that relationship with God, so, yeah, so all I give, I give unto myself, it's like knowing that and experiencing that, and yeah. The monastery is not like a hangout place, it's not a place to kind of, okay, what can I... What can I get from the monastery? I, if I'd have ever showed up at these homes and houses and gone to all these countries with the attitude of what can I get out of this, it would not have been a very joyful experience. I'll tell you, you'll get disappointed really quickly when you're looking to get something. Can you give me time? Can you give me this? Can you give me that? If I'd have shown up at all these places and I'd say, oh, you have to have a minimum of 50 people before I'll come. Uh, or a minimum of 25 people, or whatever, I would have missed out on a lot of places, believe you me. And it's fun, because sometimes you show up and it's like a whole theater, a whole theater full of people, and you have the same experience, and sometimes there's one or none. And you show up and rejoice, because you're there to give. You're not there looking for numbers, you're not there looking for money, you're not there looking for recognition, you're not there looking for respect. You know, you're not showing up and say, saying, respect me. You know, you don't care. You are the living respect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a way to undo expectations around respect, is if you are so respectful that you are the living respect, you don't, aren't going to care what people say, do, whether they stand on their hands or whether they twirl around or whatever they do, you don't care because you're there to give. Mm -hmm. You have one purpose to give.